Okay, Alexander, let's talk about Erdogan, the migrants that he's uh, busing into the borders, onto the borders with Greece. He's putting on boats for the migrants to land on Lesbos mm -hmm. and other Greek islands. Um, big problem here, really big problem for Greece and for Europe and for Erdogan. I think mm -hmm. this is probably the biggest problem for Erdogan. And I say it's a very big problem for Erdogan yeah. because so far, knock on wood, thank God, the Mitsotakis government, which is a new government, mm -hmm. just recently won elections, has a strong mandate to govern. Yes. They have held firm, unlike yeah. the Tsipras government, which yes. was very open borders. And he admitted it. The Chief House government mm. admitted that they were open borders. Mm. The Mitsotakis government ran on a platform of not being open borders for the most part. And they have held firm and they've said no migrants are coming in. Mm. Also, Bulgaria mm. has also dispatched troops to their crossings, to their uh, border crossings with Turkey. And they've said no migrants are coming in. Mm. So far, both governments are holding firm Mm. on that promise. Now, it doesn't mean that there are intentions. It doesn't mean that uh, some migrants haven't seeped through the cracks. There has been uh, reported cases that some migrants made their way in or have mm. landed on Lesbos. But for the most part, Europe, the mm. front lines of Europe seem to be holding firm. The mm. question that I have for you is, what do you think Merkel and Macron are going to do? Do you think they're going to bribe Erdogan again? Mm -hmm. Or do you think they're just going to ignore it? They've been very quiet. Mm. Merkel's been very, very quiet on this. Mm. I haven't seen her running to Ankara like she did last time. Mm. And you also have the factor, the variable of Corona. And not all, so not only is this about protecting the borders of Greece and Bulgaria and Europe as a mm. whole, but it's also about protecting the spread of the coronavirus because the last mm. thing you want is huge influx of people coming into your country who you can't check. I mean, this is a public health issue at its at the most basic level. Yeah. And Greece already announced, the Mitsotaki government, to be fair, announced about a week ago that they mm. would start imposing very strict border controls because of the coronavirus and not because of Erdogan's desire to flood Europe, yes. blackmail Europe, essentially, mm. with the three million migrants that they have in, uh, that they're holding in Turkey. So what do you make of the picture right now, Alexander, of what's going right, on? Right, lots of things to say. Firstly, you're absolutely right to use the word blackmail because that is what this is. Um, and if you ever deal with a blackmailer, and I've had to deal with blackmailers in professional capacity, my professional capacity, on several occasions, you know that the very last thing you ever should do with a blackmailer is submit to their demands because they will simply escalate them. If you give them those sort of people an inch, they will take a mile. And that is exactly what Erdogan is trying to do. He sees these refugee or migrant flows as his uh, uh, leverage over the European Union. He is involved at the moment in a crisis in Syria, in Idlib province, where his soldiers are being killed by the Syrian and Russian air forces. Uh, and he is trying to pursue a very overambitious policy and he wants to try and mobilize Europe behind him and he knows that the Europeans don't basically agree with what he's doing but he's trying to pressure them by threatening to flood their countries with refugees and so the right thing to do with that is to actually say to Erdogan no and no no to supporting you your policies no to uh, submitting to you when it comes to refugee flows. And I'm glad to say that's been the reaction so far, though, as you also rightly say, so far it's been actually articulated by the frontline states, Greece and Bulgaria, not by the two major uh, European powers, Germany and France. Now let's just talk quickly about Greece. I mean, there is of course a fundamental ideological difference between the Mitsotakis government and the Tsipras government on this issue. Tsipras was, as we know, uh, a left-wing, if you like, kind of internationalist. He believed in open borders. He was the sort of person who really wasn't very keen on immigration restrictions of any kind. And of course, he was somebody who was always going to let lots of people in. Um, uh, Mitsotakis comes from a completely different tradition. He's a much more conservative figure. He knows that Greek society 
though you know Greeks are welcoming and generous people, and you know they're not people who would normally, uh, uh, you know, who, who lack in em who lack empathy with people who are in trouble. But he knows perfectly well, Mr. Takis does, that Greeks who understand what Erdogan is doing very well, the Greek people know Erdogan extremely well. I mean, he's our neighbor. He's he's the neighbor of Greece. They understand what Erdogan is doing. They understand what this is all ultimately all about. They've also had to uh, uh, submit to large uh, um, Erdogan orchestrated refugee flows in the past. They're not prepared to take this, nor are the Bulgarians who have a long history of trouble with the uh, Turks and before, you know, with the Ottomans before that. Uh, uh, stretching back hundreds of years. So Greece and Bulgaria are holding the line. But you're absolutely right. It is the European states, the big European states, that ultimately must come to their assistance. Now, uh, Merkel is remaining incredibly quiet because, of course, in a, in a way, she authored this catastrophe. She authored this catastrophe because back in 2015, she opened Gen Germany's doors to the migrant flows. So now it, she's very embarrassed by it because it was by opening the doors to the migrant flows in 2015 that she gave Erdogan the leverage that he has to use this issue of migrants in the way that he is doing. So she doesn't want to come out openly and straightforwardly and say Erdogan must, you know, not do this and he's behaving improperly if he does. Because the, if she does that, she's admitting that her policy in 2015 was wrong. On the other hand, she knows perfectly well that the mood in Germany has turned decisively since 2015. The IFD is rising in the polls in many places. If anything like 2015 happens again in Germany, she is in very, very serious trouble. Uh, and that's, you know, a, a, perhaps a colossal understatement by me. I mean, I think Germany would rebel in that kind of situation, you know, in its very orderly and organized way. But I mean, there would be a major political crisis if Merkel tried to pull the same trick off a second time. And as for Macron, I think that, of course, in this situation, he uh, uh, wants to keep as far from this as possible, because so far his policy, as I understand it, has been to try to get himself involved in the Syrian conflict. And he's been trying to get Erdogan and Putin to agree to this summit in, in, in Istanbul, which he would be attending together with Merkel, along with Putin and Erdogan. Putin has said no, by the way. But um, I think ultimately, if push comes to shove, uh, the very last thing that uh, that uh, Macron wants is another massive refugee flow, because the only beneficiary of that politically in France is going to be Marine Le Pen. So you know, the 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 political dynamics are very different from what they were in 2015. But you have one leader who is Merkel, who is very compromised on this issue and therefore struggles to take a strong line. You have another leader, Macron, who is over ambitious and for that reason is reluctant to take a strong line. And at some level, I think both Merkel and Macron are still in the grip of that ideology, which basically sees, you know, mass movements of refugees and opening doors as a good thing. Now, can I stress, this is not a call, and I, I've heard some people who, you know, be in contact with Iran, it's not a call for you know, rounding up people all over Europe who've been settled here for a long time and have made jobs and businesses here and live, uh, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a proper way. It's not a call for rounding them up and throwing everybody out. It is for having proper control of your borders which Europe has not had before. And that's where I think the crisis is. Well, I think it's also a call, Alexander, to yeah. finally settle the, the problems in Syria. I mean, yeah. I, I, the most logical way to settle this is, Turkey, you played a major role 
in destabilizing Syria. Correct. And now all these, a lot of migrants, and they're not all Syrians, by the way. No. Let's just focus on the Syrian migrants and the refugees. Yeah. A lot of the Syrian refugees are now resettled in Turkey. Yes. We also have a lot of elements of ISIS and Al-Qaeda that once again Erdogan funded mm. and paid. Yes. yes. And you, you want to get those ISIS and Al-Qaeda elements into Libya now. Yes. So you want to move them through Europe into Libya. That can't happen. Mm. But even more so, it's to everyone's advantage, if you just pump pump money into Syria and finally start rebuilding the country, so at least the Syrian element of Absolutely. the migrants that are in Turkey can go to Turkey and not to can go to Syria and Absolutely. not to Europe. They can start to go home. That's what needs to happen. Absolutely. Obviously, I know you have the U.S. that they still have their two thousand troops there and they're not budging. Yes. Now you have this Erdogan dynamic, and supposedly he's not budging and he's making you know all these threats. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to put yeah. refugees here and migrants there and NATO mm -hmm. and Article Five, whatever. But the real solution is to rebuild Syria as far Absolutely. as the Syrian migrant part of this goes that's the human and decent thing to do it's absolutely true and it's the, so absolutely right and the same by the way is true of libya i mean libya was controlled i mean there were mass refugee flows from libya whilst uh, uh, colonel Gaddafi was in charge because libya in those days was a functioning state syria needs to become a functioning state again and i'm sure that if that happens we won't get this pressure of people trying to flee from wars in and, and you know broken societies in these countries. It's extraordinary that people never make this connection between the fact that you know Western policy in trying to pursue regime change in these countries is is not only destroying lives uh, uh, and putting these people in a critical situation, but it is you know leading to this massive backwash of refugees who, who, who you know, are, are, are creating in, in turn a backlash, a political backlash in Europe. And you're quite right. It's the Syrian war ought to be winding down now. Uh, there's no prospect of changing the government in Damascus. I and mean, that'd be a crazy thing to try and do. Um, so the best thing to do is to accept that reality uh, except that Assad has won the war, uh, you know, arrange for the Syrian government to regain full control of its territory, eliminate these terrorist groups that are still in Syria. I mean, you know, to be very clear, we all are threatened ultimately by Al Qaeda and ISIS and these kind of people. So we shouldn't want them to have safe havens. And then, of course, there's a good chance that many of these people will go back to their countries if they start to redevelop and many more of them won't want to leave anyway so i mean you know because they'll they'll be living in settled societies which have a future again so that that's what needs to happen that's it's, the solution that's the solution that is the, the most logical simple solution that's Absolutely. the pressure point that needs to be put on erdogan not this yeah. You know, stop the put, put put a cap on the migrants. You know, plug up yes, the sir. migrants. Here's some money. Hold yes. them in the refugee camps a little Absolutely. more, like Merkel did oh, last time. No, we're not letting them in. And Erdogan, either you sit down with the Russians, with Assad, and you stop exactly. this nonsense in Idlib. Yes. Or you're going to be the one. Exactly. Your government's going to be the one that collapses. Yes. yes. Not not Syria. Not Europe. Your government. Right. Well, indeed so, and because, of course, the other thing that happens is that keeping people in refugee camps like that. And by the way, I mean, you know, if some of this, this is a terrible thing. It's a way of radicalizing people, keeping them indefinitely in refugee camps in that fashion. But, you know, keeping them in refugee camps should not be a sustainable long term solution for Turkey either. It's I mean, Erdogan's policy. This policy of regime change, which he has been following under the encouragement of the hardliners in London, Washington and Paris, has been a disaster for Turkey, too. So it's it's time everybody ended it. Now, I, you're quite right, by the way, in your introduction to bring up the coronavirus, because uh, the coronavirus is now well established in Iran. It's almost certainly going to spread from Iran. It's probably going to spread elsewhere in the Middle East. There's lots of 
contacts between China and the Middle East. People come and go, that there's lots of movements there. So the Middle East is going to be a major transit area for the coronavirus. That's not, you know, that's not an imaginary thing. Uh, uh, that's not an aspersion against people. It is simply a product of the way in which populations and trade moves. It's inevitable that, the, you know, the coronavirus is going to spread through the Middle East. If you open up the borders in this fashion and let mass movements of people come into Europe, they're going to bring the coronavirus with them at a time when the Europeans are completely unprepared for it. Um, they are still refusing to take even basic steps like putting controls on their own internal borders. I say internal borders, the, uh, the national borders that exist within the EU. They are still standing firm on Schengen, on the Schengen borders. And if, if you know, people move into Europe in this fashion, well, you're going to have the epidemic spreading across Europe, but much more quickly at a time when health systems are not ready. So you've got to think about that too. So it's, it's something where I have to say this, Merkel yet again is not showing any leadership. No, not at all. Mm. So much has changed since 2015. You know, mm. the Brexit dynamic. Yes. The UK is not in the EU anymore. No. Merkel's power is diminished. You have coronavirus yes. now. If I was Mitsotakis or if I was, you know, Italy, Bulgaria, where you're on the front lines of these migrants, I would just use that as your frontline excuse. It's not yes. an excuse, but I would just tell the idiots in Brussels, the idiot globalists in Brussels, look, sure, we take migrants, but you know what? We've got coronavirus, so no one can come in. Well, Just right. say that. Yes. <laughs> it's period, done. Yes. It's done. Erdogan has found himself in a very, very difficult place. And I yes. think that's what the Mitsotakis government is pointing to. They're saying, we're not going to allow these migrants in, number one, because mm. we know what Erdogan is up to. And we, we can't absorb it in Greece. Mm. And to be honest... The Greek island, where a lot of the migrants would go, simply cannot absorb no, it. They no. can't handle it. They already have no. 30,000 migrants staying in camps that were meant for 3,000. Yes. And the dynamics of tourist islands, yes. which are meant for tourism, have have changed dramatically, and they're hurting yes. the local population, what's going on there. But that's maybe another video to do yeah. on to do on that subject. Yeah. But Mitsudaki is going to say, look, we can't have the migrants in because we know what Erdogan is doing, number one. And yes. number two... This is a massive health risk. We Absolutely. just can't let the inflow of people come into the country with this virus going around. It's Absolutely. almost God's way, Alexander, of saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. Globalism does not work. It has to stop. Well, it, it, I mean, uh, in, uh, globalism in terms of the coronavirus, I mean, the coronavirus is a product. The way it's spreading is, is a sign of how interconnected the world has become as a result of globalism that's one thing and of course the crisis is also the other side of globalism which is the regime change policies which to be very clear are a product of the globalist neo elitist neoliberal philosophy that the two things are very linked um that's a, we, we you know we've talked about how they've destroyed societies and have caused of these massive flows of people so if you think about it, this is all a consequence of, 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 of this. The, this. This is all a product of it. Now, I'm not saying that there wouldn't have been an epidemic of some sort with coronavirus you know, before globalization. But if there'd been a more, shall we say, a, a, a world where nation states had been stronger, I've been left to be stronger and better organized with better control of their borders and better health systems, such as we had, for example, say in the 1970s and the 1960s, then it would have been much more easy to control this, this movements of, uh, 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 you know, movements of epidemics like this. And, and this is a direct result of the way in which the, the order that existed has been shattered and this thing that has been put in its place simply isn't working very well. 
Do you think the governments of uh, Greece and Bulgaria and other frontline countries, say Italy, you think they're going to uh, continue to stop the migrants from coming in? Do you think that Merkel and Macron, at the end of the day, are just going to kind of just be quiet? You know, kind of like, you know, we we really screwed up in 2015. And now we're just going to kind of, you know, just, just right. you know, look in the air and just be like, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything and just not get involved. And just I, let Erdogan simmer. To, to take each one in turn, I think the Greek government will remain firm. I don't think they will let uh, uh, mass movements of people uh, flood into Greece in the way that Erdogan is threatening. I think Bulgarian government probably will, but I don't know enough. I don't know Bulgaria sufficiently well to be so sure. Um, I think Italy is a very complicated situation because you have a, an unstable and weak coalition government there which uh, um, isn't very uh, uh, able, I think, to take strong lines. Remember, they're prosecuting Salvini because he turned people back, essentially. And, you know, they're saying that, that he kidnapped them by doing that. So, you know, given that they, that's the stance they're taking, how are they going to respond if they have to do the same thing? So that's, that, that, that puts them in a much more awkward position. Um, as for the Europeans, as for Merkel and Macron, I think that they will find that a silence playing for time on this is an unsustainable political position. At some point, Europe will have to speak and Merkel, or at least the German government, Merkel may not be around for very long, the German government and the French government will have to take a, a, a public stance on what it's on what you know it thinks should happen and what they're going to do what do you think that stance is going to be well i i think that the answer has to be and i think i think macron is probably more likely to see the logic of this certainly than merkel is but i think that eventually whatever you know leader takes over in germany they will have to take the line that public health uh, and political stability are ultimately the priorities at this time in europe especially with Brexit, as you said, especially with the European budget in deep crisis, with it because they haven't got the British contribution. They can't handle it. So, they can't I mean, handle exactly, this. Exactly. So, you know, they've got to take a strong line and say, you know, these people can't come in, in you know, in, certainly not in the way they did in 2015. They have to be proper border controls. And that may very well mean uh, also that we have to revisit the whole question of Schengen and free movement within the union. I mean, I think they'll have to do that because um, as we discussed in the program, which we did on the coronavirus, health issues, people's lives ought to be the paramount concern at this time. Okay, so let's now, game plan this out to end the mm -hmm. video. Scenario one, if Europe folds to Erdogan and they say, mm -hmm. okay, bring the migrants in. Mm -hmm. Does the Greek government collapse? Do European yeah, I, uh, nations start collapsing? Does Merkel's government collapse? Because, yes. like you said, I agree with you. I don't think the EU can handle a massive no. migrant inflow of a million no. or two million migrants. I think no. a lot of countries are going to start to go under if that happens. Yes. A yes. lot of countries. Scenario number one. Scenario number two, Merkel, Macron, Bulgaria, Greece, Italy, they all say no. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. Yes. We know what you're up to, Erdogan. We got Corona now. <clears throat> we just can't let this go on. What happens to the migrants then? What happens to Erdogan yeah. then? Where do these yeah. people go? Right. What does Erdogan well, do? What <clears throat> leverage does Russia have at that point? Right. Okay. Let's 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 start with scenario one. If we have a repeat of 2015, we are going to have a major political crisis in Europe. I I think that governments in Germany certainly, in Italy certainly in France, very possibly will buckle. I, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine the populations of these countries accepting this a second time. And um, I, I say that despite the fact, you know, that in, in especially in Germany, where I've been, people are still very, you know, prepared to, to do what they must to help people. But I think that a, a, an open doors policy, such as happened in 2015, is now politically impossible and unacceptable. And I think any government that tries to pursue those policies would collapse very quickly. And we would also see, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, 
but I, I think we would also see major social tensions in that case. Um, you know, people talk about the rise of the far right. If we get anything like this a second time, I'm afraid we would start to see real evidence of things like that act actually starting to happen. I mean, Greece, for example, which is a country we both know, we've seen how Golden Dawn has receded. If we have a million people passing through Greece, Golden Dawn, I can assure you, will be back. That's my own view. So that, that's, that's the first thing. I don't think we're going to get there. If Europe says no and preserves the position we have now and says to Erdogan, you know, this is a bluff. We're not prepared to accept it. You're not, we're not going to, we're going to stick with the agreements which were reached. We think your policies in Italy were completely misguided. You've got to sort out your own mess. Then, of course, uh, Erdogan finds himself in a very, very difficult position. And we will see what happens. But, of course, one thing the Europeans can do is, well, two things they can do. First, promote a Syrian peace settlement. Long overdue. That has to happen. And that makes it even more urgent that this happens. The second is they have to start doing something with these unfortunate people who are in these refugee camps in Turkey and elsewhere. Some of them, as I said, facing uh, uh, um, these uh, uh, radical groups and in danger of radicalization and arranging both to re-educate these people uh, so as to liberate them from these uh, noxious philosophies, but also to try and get them to go return to their own countries. So th th that, that has to happen. And you know, it will require some resources. And none of this can happen without Russia. I mean, it's, it's logical, because Russia is the country which is playing the critical role in stabilizing Syria. Now, Macron seems to understand this, in fairness to him. He seems to be talking about the need for a rapprochement with the Russians. There are all sorts of people in Europe who resist this. But, you know, without the Russians, nothing can happen. And I think that we need in Europe realistic policies which will produce realistic and effective solutions that ultimately will do good. Do good, do good for everybody, for the people of Syria, for the refugees, for the people of Turkey, and for the people of Europe. And at the moment, we don't have that realism. What we have is um, ideology and posturing and threats and violence, which have only caused havoc. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much.